the bus project is a very large collection of, of some of Pittsburgh's most serious theater artists coming together and putting on six 10-minute plays in 24 hours. Six playwrights rode around on a bus for 90 minutes, and from that experience, we formulated a 10-minute play based on our thoughts and impressions on the theme of transformation. My bus ride was on the 500, which took me to Highland Park. I haven't been on a bus in probably 30 years, but um, it, was, it was a good time. I rode the 61C out to Homestead, and then I got off the bus. The 53F came by, and I took that, which was great because it went back via the parkway. And buses are great, but they don't have bathrooms, and I really had to pee bad. Well, okay, I tried to escape the bus ride, and then I gave over to it, and it works. Again, I would have gone home and written something, but it wouldn't have been authentic to the process, and this was. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Triple Live. There are writers, directors, and actors, and everyone meets on Friday night at 8 o'clock. All the actors introduce themselves. Then the writers stay overnight and write 10-minute plays. It's about not getting any sleep. I'm not sure exactly what the writers went through. That's a bit of a mystery. I think each of them went through something different. I went on a bus for an hour and a half, and I was inspired by people on the bus or not. And then we came, we came back to the theater, and we met actors who did an actor parade. And at this point, I really, really, really wanted to go home because I felt like, you know, time's ticking. I gotta go home, I gotta write a play. We had from 8 o'clock at night till 8 o'clock in the morning to write the play. We turned it in to the uh, artistic directors. They farmed it out to the directors and the cast. And then at 10 o'clock, the actors arrived, were given their assignments, the plays, read through them, and we all went to our various rehearsal spaces around the cultural Sandstorm, district. A powerful V12 engine, a thousand horses under the hood. The what inspired the play that I wrote, uh, Legal Alien, was I saw a guy in the uptown section. He looked like he was um, Eastern European. It looked like this wasn't his only job, like he worked a couple different jobs. So that that yeah. made me think of my main character. Mm -hmm. That that prompted me to think about, you know, aliens getting jobs. Are you serious? Yes, this is what I am. <laughs> but you're not African American. I am Africana. <laughs> well, my play was called Christmas Eve at the Thunderbird Cafe. And I got that from my bus, the 91A, went through Lawrenceville, and I saw a sign for a bar called the Thunderbird Cafe, and I thought that was a cool name. As soon as I sat down, there was this guy who was eating a sandwich like he hadn't eaten in like three weeks. He was like, <laughs> onions flying, peppers going everywhere. Oh, slow down, Rover. What, don't they feed you at the pound? So if somebody eats a sandwich like that in my play. I was riding on the bus, and we were riding through Forbes Avenue on Forbes Avenue in Oakland, and there was a group of people protesting the military recruitment center. Since operations began in Iraq, 1,217 Americans have died. And that just kind of blew everything else I had been thinking of. Would you spit on the 1,217 dead Americans by sitting behind the steering wheel of a car that doesn't use enough of that oil. My regular plays are not overtly political, but I thought, well, it's 10 minutes. I could do something like that. Take the bus, there's no bus riding near or far. Tell me why you, you and I should never buy a car. <laughs> I was listening to this guy who was talking about Eddie Murphy and I, and to this little girl who was, you know, beautiful and sweet and never verbally responded to him at all. And I thought, you know, the best thing to do would be just to be kind to this guy and acknowledge that, wow, you must be Eddie's best friend, yeah. That's what he wants, obviously. And so that became the theme. My wife, she stole everything I ever had, so I called Eddie to get some money from her. The whole thing is about transitioning out of yourself, transforming out of your protective environment into that notion of understanding that what somebody wants is simple and you could give it so easily.
and do it. Eddie Murphy, he must be a good friend. This project was spontaneity on stage personified. It was all about spontaneity with the writers, spontaneity for the actors, spontaneity in the rehearsal room, and even spontaneity in the house tonight and the performance because everybody was flying by the seat of their pants. A lot of times in the theater that's looked upon as being a negative to be kind of flying by the seat of your pants, but I think in this case it made it really exciting and vibrant and electric. I mean, there's so much excitement here, and even when I was sitting at my desk at 4 o'clock in the morning writing, and I just thought, oh, this is so neat, there's like six of us right now, uh, hidden away in little cubby holes in this city, and we're all writing plays. I think that's really neat, and I hope the audience gets that sense of excitement, and this is, you can't get newer than a play that's only eight hours old.